Welcome, Benjamin. Well, thank you. Good afternoon. Well, I'm, I'm sure you, we've, you've heard this statement before. Real men wear skirts. Okay, so th that's me right there in a skirt. My early days in the, in the university, I played a role of a Scottish man um, in a drama. This is before I will go on to become the founder of an idea, Woman 2.1 Summit. Woman 2.1 Summit is a conference for women. It's a platform, a gathering, where business leaders, entrepreneurs, change agents um, come together to share their story of what is possible. Their story of how they made it so that other young girls and other women will also activate their dreams and go on to become um, who they were brought here to become. And one of the things that we have done at the summit is to um, help women find their voice. Uh, so we were innovative about it. We created a collage, a canvas, where the attendees that come to the summit are given the opportunity to write down their dreams and share with the world. And it's been amazing, the remarkable, the audacious dreams that the young, the ordinary young ladies that we uh, see around and the women that come to the summit um, have. Some of the dreams are personal dreams, some are community bound. Some of the dreams you know, have um, consequences on this nation. Some are even global. And yet, they are the dreams held close to the heart of ordinary women that we see around. Um, the summit has um, had some good Sussex stories. One of the, the stories that ha has emerged from the summit has been this story where a young lady comes to the summit and realizes that she too can go back to her community and change the lives of the people there. The young lady comes to the summit and starts an organization called Made Aid, which pays, raises funds to pay the school fees of young boys and young girls in her hometown of Slovenia. That's one story of the summit. The, okay, is, is the story where um, a man sends us a message, a man who comes to the summit, a young man comes to the summit and sends us a message that great things happen at Woman 2.1. He comes to the summit, a, a man comes to the summit organized for women and meets a speaker that um, has so much interest in what he wants to do for Africa. So this speaker connects this young gentleman to um, interest in Silicon Valley. And this young man who started Pharma Line um, first learned about social enterprises at the summit. And he will go on to today uh, meet the, the founder of Facebook, Mark, and go on to meet the founder of uh, WhatsApp and um, page and make presentations at Silicon Valley's and Mobile World Conference recently. Th these are some of the, uh, the stories that have emerged from what we have done at the summit. But the question you ask is, why is a man like me doing this? Why do I continue to find myself in places like this in, in the midst of women? And I must say that I have enjoyed the support of some few men who also believe in the agenda of advancing the cause of women for transformational change in Africa. So I have some few men supporting. But interestingly, I have been called names. <laughs> some have called me IGP, International Girls Prefect. <laughs> some have called me Minister of Women Affairs. Some have called me CEO of Women. That is the woman's man. But um, for me, if, even though I am a, a testament and a product of the power of a determined woman, my mother, who even with little education saw the importance of educating her children so that we will um, activate our dreams and become a success story in our nuclear family, in our community, and be a shining light to other people to look onto. What has really moved me to do what I have done with Woman 2.1 Summit is this. Africa. I'm very passionate about Africa. So what about Africa and women that must 
excite all of us who gathered here today and those that will um, learn about the story beyond the walls. Africa has women in abundance, just as we have minerals in abundance. In so many places in Africa, women form the majority. And, and you realize that in most cases, our majority, which is women, are undereducated, they're underdeveloped, under resourced, under supported. But we find ourselves in a moment where everyone is talking about Africa rising. We're excited about a certain transformation that Africa is, has seen, Africans are working towards. But I believe that for Africa to truly rise, women in Africa must rise too. That is why we, we all, all of us must take a keen interest in the advancement of women. There have been great numbers, statistics about the advancement of women and growth, growth of companies, growth of communities, transformation of um, companies and national GDP. For instance, look at this one. It's a fact that among the top 500 companies in the world, those that have more women serving on their boards make more profit than those that do not. And Booz and Company will go on to say that if we can be intentional as a people, and by the year 2020, just six years away from now, if we will be intentional and work towards matching the female employment rate to that of men, Nations like Egypt can boost their GDP by a whooping 34%. India can do, can, if, if India does that, they can grow their GDP by 24%, 27%. Even advanced economies like USA can grow their GDP by 5% if they match the employment rate of women to that of men. And 5% growth in GDP is a monumental percentage jump. So take note. But as a people, what can we see about what I'm talking about today? What we can com com comfortably say that is that women issues are not women issues. They are not gender issues anymore. They are human issues. They are economic issues. They are transformational issues. They are developmental issues. When one woman wins, everyone wins. When, when a woman starts a business in a community, she gives employment to men, girls, boys, and women. So. We, as a people, whether we are men or women, must take keen interest in the, in the issues of women. When a woman is educated and enlightened and, and resourced and supported, that will automatically trickle down to her family and that will go on to transform generations and we as Africans will benefit from it, whether we are men or women. So what am, am I saying? What I'm saying is that to truly get to where we want to, get to as Africans. We need more and more educated women, highly educated, highly resourced, highly supported women leading and participating in activities that will charge us forward towards that transformation we are all talking about. But to truly achieve that, we have to do something. We have to re-educate men and women about issues of women. We have to educate men and women about women again. Why am I saying that? There's a perception among men that the rise of a woman, the advancement of a woman, is a threat to men. That should change. We must tell men that women are not their competition. Women are not their competition. We must re-educate men and tell them that when a woman advances, all of us we win together. We must also tell our women, re-educate them that men are not the standard measure of achievement. We must tell the young girls and the women that they must live their own dreams. There, there, there are no limits beyond what they can become. I think it is wrong to tell a young girl that you can, uh, whatever a man can do, you can even do it and do it better. That's limiting. We have to allow them to, to grow, to dream. That is only when we can truly win together. And I must say that as a people, it's, it's imperative, it is necessary, and it is now. It's a now issue that we win together. Thank you so much.